Hey guys, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to look at some of the higher RPM fans that are available on the market. Uh, recently we got treated with the Noctua NFF12 PPC, they're industrial stroke server fans, although that kind of means the same thing, and these span up to 3000 RPM. Now this was quite a big step for Noctua because they were obviously A, renowned for being um, quiet and very efficient fans. So these definitely kicked that side of their kind of branding into touch when they were like, nope, we're just gonna make these fans that are gonna blow loads of air, make loads of noise. Uh, but they obviously put all of the NFF12 technologies into it. So Noctua were kind of the first of the quiet brands to go nuts and throw loads of RPM at something to try and shift a lot of air. <clears throat> but just recently, and I did do a video on it, Be Quiet came to the table with theirs. Now, I don't know why they still called them silent wings, but effectively they brought us the Pro fans that could, could spin up to 3000 RPM. Although they do have a funky switch on the back so that you can cap it down a little bit with an easy switch so that you don't have to mess around with your fan software uh, on your actual PC too much. Although, if you're like me, you forget that, put it together, realise one of the fans is stuck at 1600 RPM, you have to take that fan off and then move it all around. Anyway, I digress. But we have a new hitter to the table. Uh, and the, it's this fan that's the reason why I've tested the other two together, although I did ask Be Quiet for three of their pros a little while ago, and we've kind of been sat waiting for me to get round to testing them. But uh, Cooler Master have come to the club with their Mobius 120s. They do a normal version like this, which is 2050 RPM, and they do a fully RGB version, which is still fitted in here because it's the last fan I tested, and they are ARGB, but they go up to 2400 RPM. So I've tested all of these fans. Now the rig that I have here is a 5900X, and so that you understand, the AMD voltages can move all over the place and the clocks can all move all over the place. So what I've done is I fixed the clocks to four gigahertz. So I've turned off all the performance boost and all the power saving stuff, it's just four gigahertz. 1.275 volts and uh, the memory is at XMP uh, at 3600. The cooler itself is a Corsair H150i. Now the Corsair H150i, I set the fan, I actually didn't, I set the pump to extreme in the settings. And then I've got the standard fractal fan for the XL at the back, which was run on maximum. And then the Corsair ML fans that are in the front that you just can't see, they were set to 2000 RPM. Beyond that, it was only the case fans I changed the speed of. And what we did is a 1000 RPM, 2000 RPM, and then a 3000 RPM if it was possible. The Cooler Masters obviously didn't do 3000. Now, where the uh, ARGB ones do uh, 2400 RPM, what I did do with them was test 1000, 2000, and then 2400. But we put the two sets of results for it in the, the graph so that you'll see. I do need to cut in just a sec, just so that you know that the, uh, if you have a look at the bottom of the graph, it does say delta temperature. I have a thermally controlled room, I have air con, I'm very lucky, yes, but it does mean I can set the room temperature to 20 degrees. We had a variation from around 20 to 20.4 at an absolute maximum. So effectively what we have here is a delta temperature, so you take the overall temperature and then you take the, or the average temperature for the cores and then you take the ambient temperature off of your average and then that gives you your delta. So there you know we controlled the room temperature uh, and we kept it as close as possible as we could do to it being completely flat across the board and uh, for someone that is not testing in absolute like perfect laboratory settings that's the best that I can do. But you do need to kind of remember as well that when you're using this at home sometimes 20 degrees is going to be where you're going to be at a lot of you out there are probably going to be in a warmer room whether you are in the summer or even in the winter because when the winter's on the uh, heating's on and also 
this thing is going to warm your room up anyway. So we've done the best that we possibly could do with the facilities that we have available to make the testing for all of these fair. There is an awful lot of data for us to have a look at here. But the first graph that I do want to show you is a comparison of their stated pressure specs. Now I say their stated pressure specs because I don't have an accurate way of being able to test this. And uh, when they state the pressure specs, they do actually do this at maximum RPM. Now amazingly, the Noctua say that the pressure that they push through is the greatest. And then we come down, you have the Be Quiet and then into the Cooler Masters. And the slowest of the Cooler Master is the smallest one at the bottom. Now, one of the things I will say is when you talk about pressure like this, the H150i with only effectively just under a 30 millimeter thick radiator doesn't necessarily need a massive amount of static pressure because it's really when the static pressure goes up and up and up and up, that's so that you can basically push through a thicker rad because it can obviously get it through. Um, and some of the results that we have seen today may not, because of the radiator, favour that. Also, some of the results may not favour the fact that I didn't leave the CPU completely unhinged. Uh, so we could possibly have done a much hotter CPU test to favour the 3000 RPMs a little bit more. Now, I did for the first time, because people have been saying at me for ages about not doing uh, noise testing. So we've done noise testing with this today in the best way that I possibly can do with my little doctor meter. But again, the lowest um, result which I had for just this, the, the, like the normal room and with the uh, system at 1000 RPM, they're all pretty much the same. So that might be something as a limitation of my kit. Uh, I could actually turn the system off and even just the, the standard noise in the room was 38.8. And then I talk and you'll see it goes up. Uh, so uh, sadly, as you can see, with the <coughs> fan testing for the noise alone, and I will give you all of these results uh, combined and separately and all of that sort of stuff, but you can see that they all did 38.8 um, at 1000 RPM. I tested that basically a metre away from the system itself, basically like that. And then really if I moved it around, it, it went up. Um, and by the way, when I say if I moved it around, it went up, I mean actually the movement made it go up because of the air blowing over the top of it. Um, I did it from a metre away to kind of uh, be like you're sat there beside it. Although I could have literally just put it on the side of the rig and the result was pretty much exactly the same. Then we have the 2000 RPM, which they all did. The 2400 RPM is just for the uh, RGB. And then you have the two, what we'll call the big hitters at the top for the 3000 RPM run. And quite weirdly at this point is where I started to Kind of question things because the noctuas were straight away noisier at 3000 rpm than uh, the be quiet at the same level maybe that's because they're not pushing so much pressure through so it's not creating so much turbulence and at the end of the day the noctuas were not designed to be quiet whereas the be quiets kind of they did want to spend more time trying to yes have a high performance fan but not just make lots and lots of noise. But I think the way that the 2000 RPM results look in the graph kind of speaks volumes here, because at the end of the day, you can see that the two not, sorry, the two cooler masters are actually quietest at 2000 RPM. Now I'm quite surprised by this because any of the old school uh, listeners, viewers, whatever you are, people that put up with me for the longest, the Cooler Master sickle flows back in the day were, yes, okay, they move loads of air, but oh my days, they were so, so loud, just like ridiculously loud. So the fact that these two at 2000 RPM are quieter than the others is actually quite nuts. Now, if we were to move into the, the thermals, you can see kind of a, a step down here, but something that I was quite surprised about and is probably a limitation 
as I said before, between the cooler itself and the clocks and the voltage that we used on the processor is the difference between 2000 RPM and 3000 RPM isn't that vast. To the point where if I was to look at this for kind of a, an end user at home, I would not be suggesting by any stretch of the imagination that 3000 RPM is something that you'd want to be doing at home. 2000 RPM in this would be the sweet spot. And based on the difference between the noise, it actually wasn't that bad either. Now, you do need to remember bringing the fan test in and the, the, the noise graph back up, you do need to remember that 10 decibels is effectively, to us, twice as loud. So uh, another 10 decibels on top is twice as loud as it was before. So the difference between 30 decibels and 40 decibels is, to us, twice as loud as it was. So when we go from 38 up to 42 decibels, that's not a very big gap. But when we go from 38 to 48 with the Noctua, the Noctua from 1000 RPM to 2000 RPM actually got twice as loud. Now I know you're gonna shout at me at the screen now, like, did you film this, Tom? Problem was, is I, test, I did film a few different ways in that with my Lavalier, I was moving it around the room I have to be honest with you, it genuinely, when I uh, started uh, to mess around and listen to this, trying to do like uh, pre-edits and look at the way it went, it didn't sound that great. So I think I might need to get like a shotgun microphone or something uh, for the future just for case fan um, uh, kind of testing. But at the end of the day, we've got the numbers on the door, so on the actual result itself. And as you can see, you get uh, an increase of four decibels for the Cooler Master, six decibels for the Be Quiet, but a full 10 for the Noctua. And I've, I've got to say straight away, right off the bat, that that was quite an eye opener for me personally. You can mix all of the results into one massive graph for you to kind of pick apart and have a look you get both thermals, the decibel ratings for all of the fans. And in reality, I think that 2000 RPM segment is actually quite a, uh, a big telltale or, you know, it gives us a lot. And I'm personally really surprised about the Cooler Masters. Now, I've not made this video because the Cooler Masters are here. I've made this video because I needed to test the Be Quiet. So they were here first and the fact that there was an NDA for these made me remember that I could. Now, I didn't have three fans for the Be Quiet NDA originally. They only had one that they sent out to media. Had to wait a few weeks to get the other two, so they're all here now, and that's why we're testing. But whether you like the Cooler Masters, and if I'm completely honest, the, the whole blue thing with the design on it is not offensive but i don't know i'm i'm it's not i would have thought that would have been purple for cooler master or like a really really dark purple so the blue i'm not quite sure where they've gone with it but that is just aesthetics um performance wise absolutely great and weirdly when we talk about price they're actually all quite easy to remember because the big uh, the, the noctuas i found for 25 each the big quiets i found for 26 each the uh, non-RGBs I found for 25 each, and the RGB ones, strangely, were 30 each. Now, normally RGB adds a big, big difference in price. And sometimes with a difference in price, you don't then get the same performance. So the fact that they perform pretty much identically, and there isn't a big price difference, I actually think that they could possibly be onto a winner with these. Um, so, these are the best kind of all-rounder for um, the 2000 RPM bracket because they cost the same, they're a little bit quieter, but more importantly, the, the temperatures are there or thereabouts the same. Um, and quite strangely, these manage to beat these at 2000 RPM. If you want to go lead it bleeding edge, now with these, I think we could have a completely different... Uh, not set of scores, but larger gap, if we were literally, we would got to the point where we were properly, properly saturating that cooler. And I don't think with the clocks that I did, 
but that was because effectively what I wanted to do when I set up the testing was make sure I had a reasonable test for a thousand RPM that they could all cope with rather than you know the the results just not working at a thousand RPM and it was completely overheating and then we rely on the fans um, and I wanted to be able to get a number for all of them from them where possible. So that's why I kind of went that way. I could easily just turn the voltage up and then test again because the clock speed isn't really going to matter. The voltage that we put in is. So I could go through, but in reality, each set of these that I do end up testing takes me four hours because of the cool down times and the warm up times. Um, so it is a bit of a pain in the bum. Uh, and the other thing I haven't said that I should have said at the beginning is I uh, artificially uh, control the room to 20 degrees for all of this because um, I have aircon and I have actually two fairly meaty uh, like built in aircon in the office. We set them to 20 degrees and they level each other out uh, fairly quickly. So the temperature deviation for the ambient is actually quite narrow. And that is something uh, critical to mention as well. Um, so that uh, is our tests. The um, one thing I do also need to say, uh, and it is in the graphs, if you have looked, and that is the results that we displayed today were a delta temperature because all of our results were within kind of, there or thereabouts, about 0.4 of a degree centigrade for the actual uh, room delta temperature. So you were looking around the 20 to 20.4 uh, delta temperature for these. Um, and I didn't run the test back to back. We always left them to cool down. So there was lots of, I've tried my best to minimize any uh, variation and deviation with these results. So, uh, quite strangely, not the results that I expected because high speed, the Be Quiet won out, both with noise levels and performance, randomly. Uh, 2000 RPM was definitely won by the Cooler Master, uh, but in Noctua's defence, one of the things that you do need to remember is they have been making fans for an awfully long time uh, and it's just got to the point now where the other brands are all now coming trying to chip away at the the lead that they've had for an awfully long time because these nff 12s are not new fans the technology within the nff 12s has been around for years years and years like i can remember having nff 12s like six eight years ago so uh this isn't new tech but these two are now very much trying to chip away at the technology that uh, Noctua has got, and it looks like they are doing quite well. So definitely not the results that I thought I was going to get. I'm a bit open-minded, uh, open-eyed, open-mouthed about it, but please feel free, free to go and have a look at the OC3D website if you'd like to uh, digest more of the data that we have. Please let me know your thoughts underneath. Yes, I am getting out of breath because there is a lot of this I've needed to talk and break down for you, but, high speed fans take your pick but in reality on the day if you made me choose which fans i was going to be buying it would be the mobius from cooler master and out of these three that is definitely definitely not what i expected to be saying